Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I will show you in full detail a new way of how to create a silent air compressor. I also want to answer any questions that you might have from previous version of the air compression we built. Let's see one by one all the materials we are going to need. First of all we will need an air tank. This air tank should at least endure 12 bar of pressure. Second, a low noise compressor like one from a fridge, a freezer or an air conditioner. This one came from a two door refrigerator. We will need a pressure switch. This component is responsible for adjusting the pressure in the air tank and at what level of pressure the compressor will stop. A safety valve that releases the pressure at 10 bar limit. Various size of metal coupling and a one-way valve. One pressure gouge to measure the pressure, 10 bar at least. High pressure hoses. And last, a drain valve and some wheels. This air tank did not have another way out, so I had a professional technician to place a nut so I would be able to adjust the drain valve there. This step is optional if you live in dry places. Now we will prepare the tank to be painted. Of course this part is not mandatory, but it's better to look nice. And because I know that you are ready to ask, this tank is a water tank. It can hold pressure as high as 10 bar, but it is also tested at 15 bar. And because I know you will also ask, yes, water and air pressure are the same. The only difference is the density between them. And since our tank is ready, we make the necessary marks to open the holes to place the wheels later. The next part is the drain valve that helps to remove any moisture that the tank may have. And again I feel you are about to ask. So every joint I use cannabis and anaerobic glue or as it calls liquid teflon. You can find all the parts in affiliate link on the description. And it's time for the compressor. As I said earlier, this motor came from a two-door fridge. After finding the spot that we will set it, we put the screws. We will place the screws with the heads down, so after a long time we will be able to check if they are coming loose. After temporarily connecting the compressor to the power supply, we can easily find the input and the output. I removed the little blade at the top since it had no use at all. At this tank the nozzle is dispatchable, so I put it back on its place. The next step is to join the couplings and connect the implements. We don't really care about the order we will connect them. I have placed them this way because it was convenient for me. So on the right side I had to place the one-way valve and on the left side I put the pressure switch. The pressure switch is the reason why many of you have asked a lot of questions and seems to cause you a lot of problems. The most common one is that the pressure switch does not release the pressure. Is it almost sure that any pressure switch you choose is designed for professional use and large air quantities? 
In our case though, the tank is small. It will not force the pressure switch spring to open and then there will be no pressure release. Let's see how we can fix this. Using a drill with the same diameter, we will remove the copper ring that holds the small valve and the spring. This spring is the primary source of the problem, so that we will remove it. The problem is that if we place the valve again without the spring, it will break. For this reason, we will cut a peg of the same diameter as the ring we removed. Now we will connect the release hose to the modified pressure switch. We place a coupling at the base of the pressure switch and we will connect it to our build. The release hose that it is attached to the pressure switch will be connected with the one-way valve. With the high pressure hose we will connect the output with the air tank. The next step is to connect the compressors, power cables and power supply to the pressure switch. Since our power is AC, you don't have to worry about the order of the cables except from the yellow one with the blue stripe, which is the grounding. The grounding will be connected accordingly. The grounding must be in touch with the air tank. And finally, we will tighten the cap of the pressure switch. The air inlet has no pressure. We will adjust a petrol filter to keep out any dust. Moving on, we will connect the pressure gouge and the safety valve. At the one end, we will install the air valve. We will also install an air regulator for the lower pressures that we need on our airbrush. If we don't use such low pressures, you can install a simple manual air switch. Finally, we will screw the wheels at the base so we can quickly move it. And believe it or not, our air compressor is done. Of course, it's not me behind the whole process, but my father who makes everything looks so easy to do it. And here is the moment of truth. Will everything go smoothly or we will have some leaks? Everything works great. We will run a full test to check the point the compressor will stop and if the release point is working. Perfect. We have also built an air compressor from a small fire extinguisher. And another one from a big fire extinguisher. So that's all for today. Thank you all for watching. I hope this video helped you and I see you in the next video. Bye!